welcome to Two Guys Garage, an American-made chariot known as the Corvette. That's right, we've got a 2000 model right here. It's our project car, yeah. but if you notice, there's nothing under the hood. But we do have something sitting right <laughs> here, although it's a little bit naked. Yeah, man, all kinds of tips and tricks today on rebuilding a budget build LS1. Stick around, guys, this is gonna be awesome. Got a nice deal on our little Corvette. We decided to make a little project out of it, right? Because it's yeah. the ultimate hot rod, right? American V8, but I mean, serious, serious performance, right. bang for buck. You can't beat it, man. It had an LS1 in it. Now we pulled that LS1 out because the girl was kind of tired. Now, this wasn't just an easy thing where the engine just fell out, right? We had to do yeah. a bit of work. We just separated yeah, the, the complete body from the under chassis. Yeah, and then the torque tube and the suspension stay there. The motor comes out. And then you start categorizing every single component part, looking for damage, looking for parts that wear, parts you know you're going to replace. You don't really have to worry about, but also inspecting every single component. Yeah. So from the moment you start tearing the engine apart, I mean, that's when you're going to start your, your CSI process, right? Yeah looking at each part as you go to see if I've got wear, if I've got cracks, like yep. anything I need to order, talk to machine shop guy about, start that communication process, kick off your build right. And another good thing, rule of thumb, is know what the end game is. Know what type of motor you want before you start the project. Know if you're gonna do a turbo, nitrous, a blower, anything like that. That's huge because it's gonna affect every decision on how you machine things, what clearances you have, what parts you order, et cetera. Now, you're gonna go through the hot tank process and clean, and then it's more cleaning and more, more cleaning, clean. some deburring. Because any little burr, any piece of debris, let's say behind a bearing shell, it's gonna change that dimension. Yeah. Right? Hey, did, did we mention cleaning? Right. Did we mention that? So, I mean, you could take a small file, a stone, and anywhere where you're gonna have, you know, any surface that could have a burr on it, you're gonna go through and clean that sucker, sure. right? Wash all that stuff out, yeah. flush it, flush it, all the oil galleries, get some brushes out. Yep. Cleanliness is everything. But once you've done that, you got that sucker on a stand, yeah. you're just about ready where we are, to start putting some stuff together. Yeah. Now we're gonna go pop these caps off. Hmm. We've got the crank over here, nice and wrapped up and clean. And we're gonna show you a couple of tips on how to blueprint an engine, how to put it together so you can do it or work with your machine shop in some sort of relationship, right? That's great. Follow along. All right, just oiling these bearings, getting everything set so my man Bird can bring his big old heavy crank over. Come on, man. This sucker ain't right. light. All right. All right, ready? Yeah. Just Down in there. Easy, guy. easy, and yeah. Cool. Nice. All right. So check for just free spinning. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going on. He's going to lube the top side, start putting the caps on. Yeah, man. And we get the bolts run down for this thing. Let me backtrack a little bit because it looks like we're ahead of ourselves. Now we've already done our bearing clearances. So we went to the machine shop and we were able to use their micrometers and dial bore gauges to get our clearance. So we miked the diameter of the crank pin and then we can use a dial bore gauge and look at the hole in the crank mains and you can measure the difference and get our clearance. So we've set it up about a thou and a half around stock because we're gonna go, you know, a beefy motor but not get crazy. <laughs> so while he's getting those caps put on, I'm gonna check out some of the torque sequences so we know what our next steps are. Now we've got all kinds of projects around the shop and there's no way to keep it straight. So we've got a ton of these Haynes manuals around for just about any vehicle we're working on. Now these are great because they've got hundreds of projects and thousands of photos all step by step for easy to use tools, a great way for anything you're working on to keep your head straight and know exactly what to do. But we're also able to pick one up for performance engines with a lot of LS content. So I can look down here and I can get my bolt sequence for the main caps and the procedures for properly torquing the fasteners. Now you don't have to just buy the manuals anymore, which is great. You've got all this information at your fingertips, whether at your home or in your shop. So let's see, how far you got, Willie? I'm on the fourth one, man. The great thing about these LS motors is, you know, a lot of times on the old school, if you mix up the caps, you'd be just, it'd be awful, right? Oh, yeah. Well, here, they're all numbered. They're all indexed. It's kind of cool, so it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, so that's definitely something to keep track of. All the right pieces have to go in all the, all right, the right spots. Box. No mix matching. All right, so the way we're going to work out this one is we're going to replace all the fasteners because they're torque to yield. That means the first time you hit them or torque them, they're going to stretch. 
and you get one or two stretches before they'll break. But that stretch is great because it keeps a consistent clamp load. So all new bolts through the mains and the heads. So we're going to start with the inners. And let me go ahead and grab a few of those for us. To get these down in the recess, we'll be good to go. Okay, you want to lube up all your threads and you want to lube the top underneath the bolt head. Now don't fill up that thread, no. that bolt boss, because that's a hydraulic system there. If you clamp that down, you could split the bottom of that bolt boss. So come around here and get all the tops here, like so, so you get consistent friction. And we're going to throw the non-studded ones on the inner, and we've got studded bolts that'll go on the outer. We can start torquing them down. All right, Willie's got just the inner two bolts locked down to a really light 15 foot-pounds. Okay. Now what that's going to let us do is, if I come in here with a screwdriver and I pry that crank forward, it's going to be able to shift this cap a little bit underneath that light load. I want to align the thrust base top to bottom by pushing the crank on both of them together. Then we can lock it down. Yep. Now the other thing I want to do is do a little fore and aft. And if I do that, I can see my dial gauge back here. So I've got plenty of in-play clearance, which is nice. So with that being said, I'll give it one more tug forward. Let Willie do the rest. All right. Now it says from 15 pounds, torque it down to 80 degrees. 80 degrees means what when it comes to friction? Well, if you do a torque, right, if I give you a spec and a torque, depending on what lube I use, so a molly lube, an oil on the threads, the friction underneath the head, Right, all that friction difference ends up in a torque, and I could be varying quite a bit on the actual clamp. So what this does is with a light torque, right, I've got everything seated, but from then on out I do an angle, and that angle is a little bit more accurate to get the clamp load than just giving you a torque spec. Let's get this guy run. There you go. Need a bionic man sound. All right. Perfect. Now we can work our way around, then we can go to the outers and the sides. This bottom end's coming together nice. Last time you saw this panel, we finished the prep and repair steps. Now we'll fill in the repair. We're using Bondo Professional Gold Body Filler because it has a smoother consistency for better handling and easier sanding. It also contains adhesion promoters that stick to galvanized sheet metal, which is common on today's vehicles. Let the filler dry for 15 to 20 minutes, then sand with 80 grit followed by 180 grit to smooth out the surface. As a final step, apply the professional glazing and spot putty. When mixing your putty, mix a 2% mix of hardener and fold it over so you don't create air bubbles. The putty fills in any pinholes and other minor imperfections. Before this is ready for paint, we feather edge the area with a 320 grit to make the surface nice and even and ready for primer and paint. This tip is brought to you by 3M Auto, smarter solutions through science. All right, getting really close to stuffing in some pistons and rods. I don't know, man. This is the exciting part, at least one of them. Yeah, not isn't quite as exciting as firing up and doing some burnouts, but it's getting close. Yeah. So we got brand new pistons and rings from Seal Power. Now you can see the original ones. We're going to throw those away. They're, they're quite similar. You can see the flat top on top. Yeah, but you what do we see. got here? So we've got skirt coatings. Now yeah. this is real nice because it reduces friction, yeah, less listen. drag, horsepower, fuel economy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We got a hyper eutectic alloy, so this is going to be real nice. It's a high silicon. You know what that does is give it good wear char characteristics, yeah. less expansion, so you can run a tighter gap, okay. less piston rattle, and it's a really good alloy for doing street and kind of light racing applications before sure. you take that expensive step up to forged. Yeah. yeah, nice stuff, man. All right, and another thing we did. All right, we put a little little transmission fluid in here, lube this up. Now these rings our file fit rings. And we got this cool stuff from Summit Racing Equipment. It's their very own piston ring filer combo. You can pick these up too. It comes with this little guy right here, really simple ring filer. Now you want to square this up, put a little pressure on it, and then just grind away just like that. Normally you wouldn't have my fingers in the way. You would just <laughs> bolt this down and put it in the right. vise. But you can see what we did to get the end gaps just right. He'll yeah. show the other tool, which is pretty neat. Yeah, man, and this thing just squares up all the rings inside the actual bore, all right? So you wanna drop this guy right in here, right? And then you can adjust the bore for different bore sizes. We got this one set, obviously, for an LS. Butt it up against the bottom of it, 
And then we're going to be able to inspect that ring gap. All right, just take yourself a feeler gauge like that, drop it right in there. And again, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want on that ring gap. Remember that we said in the beginning, according to what your platform, what your application is, that gap is going to be a little more, a little less. Right, so a good rule of thumb, about four thousandths clearance on the end gap when it's in there for every inch of bore diameter. That's the minimum. Right. But if you've got a high heat application, you're running nitrous, Ooh, yeah. a turbo, right, you want a little bit more clearance because that high heat's going to thermal spread. expand and it's going to close that ring. And if it butts, it's going to press against the cylinder wall. You can start scuffing, Big time. failing. So. Big time damage. I've seen it lop off the top of entire pistons before. Yeah, now we did file fit because obviously we can get a tighter clearance mm -hmm. than just a drop-in. But drop-ins are great. I mean, the OEs, that's all they do all day long. Okay. But a file fit's going to get us better cylinder pressure, a little bit more efficiency, just a little thing you can do to make a better engine. All right, man, time to get these piston plugs in this motor. All right, let's keep ringing it. All right, guys, let's talk brakes for a minute. If you have noisy brakes, your stopping distance has been increasing, or you're feeling like a pulsation in the pedal, what's it mean? What's that telling you? It means to look at your rotors. All right, our friends at Raybestos Brand Brakes did a really cool thing. They took, right, they took a bunch of rotors from all over the industry and did kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. This is the Raybestos brand. This is the competitors. Right out of the gate, you notice something different. A lot of the competitors and what's happening in the industry is they're reducing this plate thickness. You can tell the difference right here. All right, by expanding that air gap, reducing this plate thickness, all right, less material. Now you think, what does less material have to do with anything? Well, less plate thickness means more heat sink. More heat's gonna get into things like your pads, your calipers, even your wheel hubs. All right, more points of failure, that's that brake fade, that squishy feeling you get. You don't want that when it comes to your brakes. Another thing they're doing is just in the veins, the things that help cool and get that gas out, right? Uh, they're reducing that as well. So this is the Ray Bestest brand, and here's the competitor's brand. Notice the material is gone. So less material means less ability to absorb that heat. All right, and that heat is what damages all brake systems. Another thing to look at, if you're feeling a pedal pulsation and that stopping distance is increasing, take a look at your rotor itself and inspect it. If it's blue all around the circle or if you're seeing cracks, it's time to get another one. Another good rule of thumb, take a micrometer and inspect it several different places. Chances are if it's over a thou out in different places, you're gonna feel that pulsation in the pedal. For anything to do with brakes, check out Ray Bestest Brand Brakes at Federated Auto Parts. And if you're thinking about putting a strut on your car, truck, or SUV, I'm telling you, just get a full assembly. You'll get everything you need with no hassles, just like this one from KYB, it's their Strut Plus. Now it comes with a tune spring for each corner of the car, so it's properly set up just like the OE spec. You don't have to disassemble anything. There's no clocking of the spring, right? It fits right in the pocket, already done. It has your bearing plate on here, your insulators, it's got your covers, your jounce bumpers. You're all set for a quality OE ride, steering, and handling. Just unbolt the old one, throw in the new one. It's KYB, it's their Strut Plus. You can pick them up at Federated Auto Parts. Now, if there's anybody around here that can make a good mess, get nice, greasy, and dirty, it's Willie. But I'm pretty close second, and I can get right in there and get messy, and a lot of times I like to just throw on a nice pair of gloves. Now, check these out from SAS Safety Corps. Now, this is a black uh, Raven nitrile glove. Now, these are unpowdered, real nice because they've got dexterity built right into them, a nice little uh, surface finish on there. You can grip and grab, but they're nice, sturdy, heavy-duty, professional grade, so you can really get in there. They're six mil. So check them out, SAS Safety Corp, for all different sizes to make sure your hands stay clean and you can get the work done. All right, you about ready with that next assembly? Yeah, man. Yeah. Now, one thing to always remember, just before you drop the old plugs down in the hole, is this ring gap. You want to orientate one on one side of the skirt and the other on the opposite side. Obviously, if you have them lined up on the same, that's going to create a lot of easy access for blow-by just to whoosh, right down to the chamber. Yeah, now the other thing you want to do is get a good ring compressor. You get those old kind of band style ones with the pliers oh, on them. Dude, I broke so many rings with that. Yeah, you got to pop that thing in there and the ring slips out and you're going to smash it, break a ring, damage a piston. So 
get yourself a good one. We got this one from Summit Racing Equipment. It's their very own. It's an adjustable ring compressor. So you can see here I've got from 390 to 405 inches I can work with this one. Or you can get different ones for different bore sizes. All right, so this guy will set right on there like that. Now it's a little bit of a squeeze, pinch, push. Yeah, you got to get, it's got a taper to it. So you can get the rings compressed just enough. This is the most delicate you will ever be with aluminum, steel, and cast, guaranteed. Nice, all right, all right. now Willie's gonna catch it on the bottom side. I've got a nice stuffing tool we also picked up from Summit Racing Equipment. Now I'm gonna get a little closer there. Now this is the, you know, moment of truth. Delicate. Where hold the compressor down so you don't sneak a ring off the bottom edge there and like I said, snap it and then drive it right home. Now you tell me. Good. How are we doing? A little more, a little more, and perfect. See, all right. Sweet. So we just seated that connecting rod to the crank on the bottom side. We can rotate this guy over, drop the cap on, bolt it, torque it, and uh, move on. This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by Seatbelt Solutions, the safest seatbelt money can buy. Have you ever been in one of those cars that's just a rattle trap? Regardless of how cool it is on the performance side, if it rattles and rolls and shakes and everything vibrates in there, it's an awful cruise and awful ride. In comes Second Skin. They have all kinds of sound deadening material that makes your car top notch. Damplifier Pro, let's start with that. It's a high quality butyl rubber and it uses an aluminum foil constraint that's going to trap those vibrations inside this rubber. It's one of the thickest foils you're going to find out there. It also works in any type climate, hot or cold. And then comes Spectrum. Now it's a high density viscoelastic spray. It can be rolled on, sprayed on, or brushed on. And talk about sound deadening. Listen to the difference in this. A little cymbal, annoying. Now with Spectrum spray on it, crazy difference, right? It's unbelievable actually. And if you want to get car even quieter, you could drop on some Luxury Liner Pro. Now it's going to trap any airborne noise you may have. So any sound deadening material you may need in your ride, check out Second Skin. Okay guys, from CRC Industries, this is their intake valve cleaner. It's designed for gasoline direct injection. Now the IVD stands for intake valve deposits. Now what's happening normally is that valve's hanging down in a combustion chamber and it gets washed by gas or any additive you add into the fuel. Well now with gasoline direct injection because all that fuel is entering below the valve and what happens is hot as swirls, it hits that hot valve, Whoosh, and cokes right on it. Now this is the first product proven to clean damaging deposits on intake valves on all gasoline powered motors. You spray it right past the mass sensor, all right, through the air intake. So it's gonna hit that valve, dissolve and lift all those deposits to get coked and stick on that hot valve. It's from CRC Industries. It's their gasoline direct injection intake valve cleaner. Check it out. For more information about anything you've seen in today's show, check out MavTV.com or visit our website at TwoGuysGarage.com. This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by StarTron, enzyme fuel treatment for all engines. Okay, just a couple more loaves in here to get the cam all set in. All right, guys, welcome back. As you can tell, I put this cam in. We got it from Pace Performance. Now, this is a small upgrade, but a good one. It's a C506 cam. It's going to give us a little more lift, a little more duration, a little more fun factor. That's right. Now, this is where our budget build starts to actually build performance. So with a nice cam in there, we can really open the valve events a little bit more, start making this thing for power. Mm. But we're going to do that in combination with some upgrade on cylinder heads. But again, thinking about budget. Right. So it just so happened, I have a set of 799 heads laying around. Now the stock LS1 came with 317 heads. It's a bigger chamber than what you're gonna see on these 799s. So if you're out hunting, junkyarding, if you will, 243 or 799 is gonna give you a smaller combustion chamber, which is gonna increase that cylinder pressure, increase that compression ratio. Yeah, and these also have better flowing ports. So along with that bigger cam, better flowing ports, there's your recipe for making mm. some power. Yeah, that so, fun meter keeps going up and up. That's right, man. Well, I got your thrust plate all cleaned up, all right. ready to go. Um, I'm gonna need the oil pump too, bro. Okay, another set of <laughs> SAS safety gloves. Let yes. me get back on it and, uh -oh. hey, We got beeps. That means our gaskets must be here. All right, things later. are moving. Let me check them out. Sweet. 
All right, all right. That looks like a stack of parts. There you go. Thanks, man. Appreciate all right, it. No problem. Now, you saw so far the build has been pretty simple. You know, not too far away from building an old small block, right? Pretty conventional stuff. But the gasket technology has made huge leaps. Take a look. We've got a complete set from Felpro. And we've shown you kind of the old style, you know, like paper gasket or the old cork gaskets that would squish. You have to RTV everything. Well, now you have something called a carrier gasket. You got a nice metal frame. The gasket's right there. No RTV. You bolt it on and off as many times as you want. It's amazing. From pan gaskets, there's no leaks on your driveway anymore, to press and place style for intakes. You pull the old one out, you press the new one in, and you're done. You can pull that intake on and off as many times as you want. Now, another thing that's really cool if we walk over to the cylinder head is MLS gaskets. Now, this is Felpro's Permatorque MLS system. Really nice with kind of their patented stopper technology. These are multiple layers of hardened steel, and each one of these layers you can see are embossed or have a stopper bead put on them to apply certain pressure in certain locations depending on deflections of the head, amount of lift, and all these different bosses and things are like springs. So as the head lifts from cylinder pressure, the springs can keep it sealed under pretty harsh conditions. Yeah, man, another thing I like about them, you can get them in different thicknesses as well. So yeah. a smaller thickness bumps up that compression. You need less compression, you get a thicker multi-layered steel gasket. Yeah, so this is the stock one. A lot of builders like this one because it's a little bit thinner, compressed tight, mm. bump up the power a little bit. So whatever you need, Felpro's got you covered. We're ready to finish <laughs> sealing up and building this engine. Yeah, man, we're out of time now, but next time when we come back, hopefully you'll see that bet on the road doing some smokies. Yeah.